In almost all of my weather forecasts, I talk about high pressure and low pressure. But recently I had someone ask me, what does that even mean? So yesterday we talked about what air pressure and air density actually is. And air pressure, you can just think of it as the weight of the atmosphere above you. It doesn't seem like the air has weight in it, but there are lots of little air molecules, billions of them. And while it doesn't seem like that would weigh anything, if you were to, I love this fact, if you were to add up the weight of the atmosphere in a one inch column going from sea level to the top of the atmosphere, it would weigh about 14.7 pounds. So what air pressure is, is the weight of all of those molecules coming down on you. But now that we've kind of built that foundation of what air pressure actually is, now we can actually talk about what does high and low pressure mean. Because that's usually how air pressure is actually used in a weather forecast type context, where you're talking about a high moving in or low moving in. And if you watch the news, probably know usually high is associated with warmer, sunnier weather, whereas a low is represented with storms. And throughout this video, hopefully we'll figure out why. So what does high and low pressure mean? Have you ever wondered why weather forecasts always mention high and low pressure systems? Or why sudden weather changes make you feel uncomfortable? That one's interesting. I'd, I'd imagine older people understand that one more. The answer lies in the science behind atmospheric pressure. In this blog post, we'll explore the meaning of pressure in the context of weather and how it influences our environment. So let's just get right into it. What is atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure, also known as barometric pressure, is the weight of the Earth's atmosphere pressing down on a particular area. This pressure is measured using a barometer and is expressed in units of millibars or inches of mercury. On average, the atmospheric pressure at sea level is 113 millibars. So just as what I said before, if you think of the word air pressure, you can interchange that with weight of the atmosphere above you. So air is, and just right off the bat, we could think of what that would mean for high and low. High pressure means you have more molecules above you and there's, a, there's more weight coming down on you. Low pressure would mean there's less molecules above you and there's less weight coming down on you. So air is made up of tiny molecules that are constantly in motion colliding with each other and with other objects. The more air molecules there are in a given area, the greater the atmospheric pressure. Conversely, the fewer the air molecules, the lower the atmospheric pressure. So one way to think of this is if you have two columns that are the same height, width, and pressure, and you were to add a bunch of more particles and air molecules into one of the columns, the pressure at the surface would increase. And then if you were to take some of the particles out of the other column, that pressure would decrease because it's just the weight of those molecules above that point that is the air pressure. So high pressure systems. High pressure systems, also known as anticyclones, are areas where atmospheric pressure is greater than the surrounding areas. They are typically associated with clear skies, dry air, and warmer temperatures. This is because the dense air in high pressure systems sinks towards the ground, causing the air to compress and warm up. As the air warms, it becomes more stable, making it difficult for clouds to form. This is why high pressure systems are often associated with clear weather. So I always think of this actually easier to think of the reverse which is that you get rising air in low pressure systems. So I think before I try to summarize that one, we'll just read the low one first and then we'll be able to contrast them against each other. So low pressure systems, also known as cyclones, are areas where atmospheric pressure is lower than the surrounding areas. They are typically associated with cloudy skies, humid air, and cooler temperatures. This is because the less dense air in low pressure systems rises towards the sky, causing it to expand and cool down. As the air cools, it becomes less stable and can condense into clouds. This is why low pressure systems are often associated with rainy or stormy weather. So I don't actually really like how they explain this overall. So I think I'm gonna to try to explain it another way. So low pressure is associated with cooler air High pressure is associated with warmer air. Now, if you hold everything else constant, and you have two even columns like this, 
the warmer column is going to expand. And it, it's hard to, ex actually, no, it's not hard to explain why this happens. So if you have air molecules in a balloon and you were to heat that balloon up, the little molecules would start bumping into each other a lot more and it would cause that balloon to expand. So the same thing happens with our two columns here. You have your high, which is warmer, and your low, which is colder. In the cold column, that is going to condense because the, it's almost like what you do when you're cold. You kind of shrivel up like this. You get all close together. That's what the air molecules do. They're not bumping into each other as much. So that column is going to get smaller. Now, on the flip side, the warm column, all of those molecules are going to be bumping into each other, and it's going to get taller. So, and I just learned this this morning, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So if you think of a point like halfway between, if you were to just draw a line between those columns, it's, it would make sense that at this point in the high, you would have higher pressure than in the low because your pressure is how many molecules are above you. So if this column shrinks down and then you take a point like right there, there aren't that many molecules above you. Meanwhile, at the exact same level along the high pressure, there's a lot more molecules above you. So your pressure is going to be higher at that point. And then you have a pressure difference and things like to go from high pressure to low pressure. Don't know if I can think of an easy way to explain that other than it just kind of makes intuitive sense. If you have a buildup of something somewhere, it wants to balance itself out. Yeah, it's almost it's almost like if you put a thing of dye in water, it dilutes itself. It's like the atmosphere wants to find balance. It doesn't want this point, this level point where it's very high here and low here. And that's why you actually get winds flowing across. It's because there's less molecules above you in that low pressure, more molecules above you in the high pressure. That means your pressure is higher across the same level. And then it means you're going to feel the winds go from high too low. Hopefully that made sense. I just read about that in a textbook. That's the first time I've tried to explain it, but uh, I'll, I'll maybe make an animated video about that and I think it would make more sense if that didn't. So you could check my channel to find that one. So pressure gradients. The difference in atmospheric pressure between two areas is known as a pressure gradient. And I didn't actually even read that, but that was exactly what I was just explaining. When it's higher here, lower here, and the wind starts flowing that way, it's because there's a pressure gradient. Air naturally moves from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure to try and balance out the pressure gradient. Pretty much exactly the same thing we were just talking about. This movement of air is known as wind. The greater the difference in pressure, the stronger the wind will be. So best way I can explain that is if you had a small difference in pressure, maybe it's that tilted to where you would have the same pressure points. So if it's that tilted, think of it like a tray. If you were to pour a little water on that tray, it would slowly flow to the other side. But if you have a huge pressure difference and you were to pour some water on that tray, it would fly down to the other side. So it's the same thing with our pressure. The bigger the pressure difference, the stronger the wind is going to be. It's almost like skateboarders do. If you're going down a hill like this, you're not gonna go very fast. If you try to go down a hill like this, you better be wearing a helmet. That was kind of a corny joke. But uh, the Coriolis effect, another factor that influences wind patterns is the Coriolis effect. And I made a whole, I made, I think, three videos on this. So you can check my channel for those. But the Earth's rotation causes winds to deflect to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. This is why low pressure systems in the northern hemisphere spin counterclockwise and high pressure systems spin clockwise. In the southern hemisphere, the opposite is true. Again, this is one of those things that's a little easier to understand visually, but if you just think about a high, a high pressure, it's like a circle of high, and your wind is flowing from the center of that outwards to where the pressure is lower. As it's going outwards in the northern hemisphere, it's going to be slightly deflected to the right. And then if that happens all the way around that circle, all of a sudden you have a, a circle spinning clockwise. Now the opposite is true for low pressure. If you get 
you're descending air and then or air just rushing into the low as it's rushing in it's going to be deflected towards the right and then if it's deflected toward the towards the right all over that low then you're going to have your low pressure spinning counterclockwise <laughs> had to think about that for a second i had to think about that because they're named kind of opposite. You have an anticyclone, which is a high pressure, and your anticyclone spins clockwise, but your cyclone spins counterclockwise. It's a little hard to remember. You just have to remember that it's opposite. So how pressure affects our environment. Atmospheric pressure has a significant impact on our environment. It affects the movement of air, which in turn affects weather patterns. Changes in atmospheric pressure can cause sudden weather changes such as thunderstorms, hurricanes, or even tornadoes. These weather events can cause significant damage to property but people, and also put people's lives at risk. So pressure changes can also affect our bodies. So this ties back to that one line at the very beginning of this that it says pressure changes can make you feel uncomfortable. And at first I was like, what? How does that work? But then I, do, I did remember something somebody told me once that I'll say after I read this. So pressure changes can also affect our bodies. When atmospheric pressure drops, as such as during a storm, the air pressure inside our bodies remains constant. This can cause discomfort, especially in people with sensitive sinuses or who suffer from migraines. High altitude sickness is also caused by changes in atmospheric pressure as the air becomes less dense at higher altitudes. So as I was reading that, I just actually remember that I've personally felt the differences in pressure. Whenever I go up to Montana, we're pretty high up in the Rockies and the pressure is much, much lower up there. And the, you can just feel how less dense the air is. And I always get super bad headaches up there. And it's potentially partly because I'm not drinking enough water and it's very dry there, but it's also likely because I'm not used to that pressure change. Now, the other aspect of pressure that what I was originally thinking about was my grandfather had always said that he knew it was raining sometimes before the weatherman did because he would actually feel it in his knees. And I, maybe he had arthritis or something, but it's the as the pressure was dropping, he would actually be able to feel it in his bones that it was about to rain, which would almost be like a superpower for a, weath for a weatherman. So in conclusion, atmospheric pressure is a critical component of weather, weather patterns. High pressure systems are associated with clear, dry weather, while low pressure systems are associated with cloudy, humid weather. The difference in pressure between two areas creates wind, and the Coriolis effect influences wind patterns. Changes in atmospheric pressure can cause sudden weather changes and affect our bodies, making it essential to pay attention to atmospheric pressure when planning outdoor activities. So, I think the key thing to think about is that a high pressure, the air is going to flow to a low pressure. That's why we get wind. It's not perfectly in a straight path because you have different factors like the Coriolis effect that's going to curve it in a clockwise direction around a high and a counterclockwise direction around a low. You're also going to have sinking air at a high pressure and as that air sinks, it's going to get warmer. Whereas around a low pressure, you're going to have rising air because you have it flowing in at the surface. And then as it rises, it cools down. As it cools down, it can't hold as much water because it can't hold as much water vapor that condenses into clouds, and then you get rainfall. So I had forgot to summarize that earlier, but that's what's happening. Around a high, you have air at the surface going out, flowing towards your low. So it's going to bring air down. And as it comes down, it's going to be the opposite of cloud development. So you get clear skies, warmer air. Whereas in a low, you have air flowing into the low. And then as it hits down at the surface, it's going to come up, create a bunch of clouds, and you get stormy weather. So hopefully you understand the difference between high and low pressure a little bit better. I think even I learned a few things reading this post and doing my research for this video. So we'll continue to do these little weather explorations every day. And thanks for watching.